Hey guys, this is Cholera SC, and I have with me a special guest commentator. This is Louder, a uh, very, very good American player who's actually going to the World Cyber Games USA. Some of you may have heard of him. Anyway, this is uh, Group um, B, I believe, of the uh, MSL between uh, round the 32, and this is going to be the first game between Flash and Yellow Arnak. Um, this is going to be very exciting on the map Byzantium, and... Uh, Louder, like I said, is actually among the qualifiers for the WCG USA, so he could actually be moving into the real world cyber games, uh, we'll know in about a few weeks, and so he should really be able to provide us a lot of great strategic and tactical knowledge, uh, of which uh, he's been uh, certainly um, practicing, and he knows for a, for a lot uh, longer than I have. Um, anyway, so uh, have you taken a look at this map, Byzantium, and uh, could you tell us what you think about it? I've played several games on the map, mostly Protoss versus Protoss. I'm not really sure how I feel about it yet. When I look at the map, I feel like it should really be an easy map for Terran. But I haven't followed how players are doing on it. I don't even know how many games have been played on it by the pros yet. So I'm interested to see a, a TVZ matchup and see how it goes. I really, I'm going to have to withhold an opinion on how I think the map's going to play out at this point. That's always good. I think it's actually Byzantium 2, um, so I guess uh, they must have changed it at some point, but um, Byzantium is uh, the map where you have a your main base underneath the uh, ramped uh, natural expansion area. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Reverse Temple, actually, and if I remember correctly, Reverse Temple was a little bit biased towards uh, Tyrion in the Tyrion versus Zurich matchup. Was that right? Yes, it was a very Tyrion map all around. Yeah, and uh, so now we're seeing actually from Yellow Arnak a 9-pool with gas here. So uh, he's going to be going for a fast rush against Flash. Of course, Flash is absolutely dominant against Zerg. It's his best matchup at 65% overall lifetime stats. However, Yellow Arnak's strongest matchup is against Terran. So this could be a very interesting game here. Uh, looks like Flash is going for that standard barracks. Um, we'll see if he decides to uh, send out an early scout. That'll be actually really critical to being able to defend himself properly because uh, on this on this map, noticing the fact that this is usually an advantage that the, uh, the main base is below uh, for, for the Tyrant player at least um, because they can use their Marines to shoot downwards and there's no ramp for the Zerg to hold but here will be a big disadvantage uh, if he doesn't get um, enough SCVs to block uh, he could be in big trouble here Yeah, I like the build that Yellow's doing because going 9 pull and being aggressive on a map like this um, when most of the Terrans nowadays do a 1 barracks expansion build and if he can contain Flash uh, from above the ramp and keep him from taking that quick expansion, he can get a very commanding lead very early. Yeah, and now we're seeing the Zerglings come out. Flash still has not scouted uh, the base of Yellow Arnak. Yarnak, the twin brother of Luxury, of course, he's going to be staying on OGN, um, where his brother Luxury is actually going to KTF next year, or next season, rather. Here comes Flash with his first Marine coming out, but he has absolutely nothing to block the ramp. And uh, I gotta say, this is looking like it, it could be very, very bad for Flash. Um, if if uh, Yarnak does damage to Flash, critical damage, what do you think his next move will be? Will he be going uh, into Fast Mulus or Fast Lurkers? Oh, and he's building the Command Center. I think this game is about to be over. Yeah, I have to agree. And uh, no, it looks like he's actually managed to to detect this, uh, he's had to cancel the command center, so he's down um, 133 minerals at least, and uh, yeah, notice this, it's hard for him to hold the ramp, uh, because it is a downward pointing ramp, uh, looks like one at marine goes down, but uh, he's able to hold, I think, for now, no, it looks like he's pushing out, and Yarnak actually has two more Zergans chasing there, uh, Flash, it looks like he's going to be able to hold, though, just barely, uh, against these Zerglings, but a couple more Zerglings coming now. Uh, it's always good to see this kind of micro battle. It's much more interesting than the usual early game in this matchup nowadays. But as long as those Zerglings keep coming, you know, they come at a faster rate than the Marines out of one barracks, so it's a uphill battle for Flash for the rest of the game, if he survives. And why do you think Flash is continuing to build a command center? It looks like he's going for it again, and a bunker. I think he's confident in his micro, and I think that, you know, he's fairly certain that having gone one barracks and he has no gas and no second barracks, I think he's feels committed to this expansion build and that's what he's determined to do. I think it's a bad choice though. That's speed. We can see. Yeah. Speed upgrade done for the Zerglings and that's going to make him so much deadlier against these Marines that don't have any backing. Once again, Flash pulled, forced to pull the SCVs. Wow. Oh, I have to say, um, most players I feel would have... Oh, and GG coming from Flash! Wow. That was, that was
was wow. really painful. That was. Do you think it would have been wiser for Flash to um, stop the, ex uh, the attempt at an expansion, maybe put down a second Rax and then play a one base strategy? Yeah, it surprised me that he tried to continue to expand whenever he saw a nine pool. Um, especially whenever the Zerglings came to him. You know, if the Zerglings had gone to the bottom left spot first, I think Flash would have been perfectly fine. But the Zerglings came at just the right time, and you know, I think maybe Flash was a little bit cocky, and, you know, kind of displayed something you don't often see in pro gamers, and that's an, a complete unwillingness to change your strategy whenever it's obviously not the right build. But in, in any case, he uh, we saw just a, a plain old build order win here from uh, Yellow. Yeah, it's something very rarely that we see Flash uh, succumb to, but um, Flash has been doing, uh, honestly, I have to say, he's been playing somewhat spottedly recently. Um, I won't spoil what happens in the OSL, but uh, I'll say in general he's doing very well in the OSL. Uh, well, I guess that's partial spoilers, but these games were over a week old. Uh, and Flash looking absolutely uh, shocked here and devastated. Now, how the MSL round of 32 works is that now Flash will have to go to the loser's match against the loser of the next matchup, which is Jang B versus the Protoss player Bull T, or Bullet, I guess. And then uh, he'll have to beat the loser there to get into the final match, which will be the loser of... Uh, of yellow versus the winner of Chang and Bulgy. But anyway, Flash, of course, still has another chance, but he has to be careful, though. He doesn't want to lose another one. That would mean he's actually out of the MSL, the round 32, which would be absolutely crazy. Um, you know, seeing Flash exit so early. But, uh, you know, he, he was doing quite poorly in the... Uh, team rival to the uh, rival battle matches between SKT1 and KTF, he actually got defeated 0-2 uh, in those matches that I casted. So uh, Flash, uh, like you said, I think he played a little cockily. Uh, Louder, from your experience, what is the best way of dealing with um, a Zerg player who's gone for the 9 pool if you were in Flash's position and uh, just say you were just forced to cancel your command center? What would you do from there? I always have the philosophy of fighting cheese with cheese and having a scouting SCV out. I would probably have built a proxy barracks uh, and one more barracks in my own base and gone an all-in three barracks build. But that being said, I'm definitely not a Terran player and I haven't been in quite some years. <laughs> but you know, versus versus a nine pool, uh, obviously a, a very committed nine pool. You know, I think you have to be a little more creative whenever your your one barracks command center build gets interrupted like that, because otherwise you're you're never going to catch up. I see. So, would you say that uh, just going for a standard build afterwards is not a good idea, like putting down your second racks and going uh, one base medic marine? I don't think it is because of the timing. You know, your second barracks is going to be really late if you've waited until your command center build failed. Uh, the timing is going to allow Zerg to get mutalisks or lurkers or whatever in plenty of time, and it's not a difficult map for Zerg to defend uh, if they simply just take their second gas and play an aggressive but safe style. That I think is great advice uh, for all the listeners out there who want to get better. Um, certainly uh, at the end of the games I think within this group of uh, five games at least I'll try to ask Louder a couple of questions uh, based on his you know vast gaming experience. Um, by the way Louder uh, plays Protoss um, he is A- minus on Icy Cup. Uh, that's right, you heard it right. He is A- minus on Icy Cup. Usually a domain only for Koreans. And um, certainly, uh, he, he is one of the best players in the United States. Um, yeah, I won't go into that too much detail because you can check out the podcast on Attack for uh, a more in-depth interview, I guess, a mini-interview of Louder. But in any case, uh, we'll be moving on now to the second matchup between uh, Jangbi and Bull T. And I think Louder will be able to give us even more insights because this will be a Protoss versus Protoss.